Welcome traders to this week's live market and trade analysis session with me, Patrick Manley. We're going to get started here in just another 10 or 20 seconds. Okay, that is one o'clock UK time. So we will get this session underway. Before we jump into today's presentation, as always, I want to adhere to the risk disclaimer. And most pertinent for today's discussion is the fact that the views and opinions expressed by me are solely mine. They're not indicative or representative of those held by Ticknell UK or Ticknell Europe Limited. For those of you who are here for the first time, a brief introduction to myself. After I graduated from university, I joined a City PLC consulting firm, left with some colleagues and went on to successfully co-found and exit a consulting startup focused on C-suite executive search for technology businesses. Essentially, I had a front row seat to the dot-com bubble, witnessing people make and lose a fortune in the market, sometimes quite literally overnight. So I decided to explore my curiosity for markets with some capital to play with and some time on my hands. I started day trading the S&P 500, or probably more appropriately at that stage, day gambling. And so uh, after I racked up some, uh, some pretty solid gains, however, as is often the case, my beginner's luck ran out and I essentially began to average down into losing positions, giving back all my gains and ultimately taking a six figure hit to my personal capital. So this was a gut wrenching and sobering experience is an understatement. I really had to stand back and figure out if it was feasible for me to make a living from the markets. So I decided to get serious about trading and sort out a mentor with an excellent trading track record. Working with my mentor for a period of 18 months was a time during which I upped not just my technical game in terms of researching, developing extensively back and forward testing strategies that crucially suited my personality, all of which are underpinned by a rigorous risk management approach. But most importantly, during this period of mentorship, I significantly developed my mental game. And probably most importantly of all, I made the watershed shift from being a highly goal-orientated individual focused on financial gains to becoming purely process-orientated. So what does that mean? Well, it means I had to stop focusing on what I could make from the markets and start focusing solely on managing my mindset to allow me to consistently execute my trading strategy, oftentimes in the face of negative feedback from the markets in the form of losing trades. But once you become process oriented and you have a professional trading mindset and you understand the true nature of trading being a numbers game, in which you're simply playing the probabilities, you lose the emotional investment and that hellish emotional roller coaster of living and dying by the outcomes of individual trades. So I'm no longer concerned with the outcome of individual trades or even a small string of trades. My focus is on the next 100 trades because I know my focus on excellence and execution my edge will demonstrate itself over an extended series of outcomes. My multi-strategy approach has delivered profitable annual returns since 2008. Since 2013, I've also been managing investor capital through a managed account service, again, delivering annual positive returns. Since 2010, I've also mentored hundreds of private traders of all experience levels from complete novices to former CME floor traders in developing the technical and mental skills to reap consistent returns from the markets. In addition, to my fund management and mentoring. I'm a resident market expert exclusively providing market and trade analysis to Tickno clients. I provide an in-depth daily market outlook, breaking down the fundamental and technical drivers for the trading day ahead. I also provide daily technical trade setup videos for trades that I'm tracking in the market uh, as the trading day progresses. Uh, these are shared through the Tickmill Trading View account and the Tickmill Market Expert blog. I also run Tickmill's eMini Strategy Facebook group, where I post a daily trade plan outlining my pre market thoughts for the New York cash trading session for the SP 500. I give my bias for the trading day ahead and specific action areas where I'm looking to engage the market. These pre market plans have delivered. Close to 6,000 points of profit since we launched the group in April 2021. The second Tickmill strategy group I run is for traders who really want to take their trading to the next level. The Tickmill Futures Telegram group is a real-time environment where on a daily basis I share in-depth insights, analysis, and real-time trades. I also provide live commentary during the opening hour of the New York Cash trading session, where traders can essentially see in real time how I dissect the markets and identify asymmetric trading opportunities. 
These sessions act as a platform, helping traders to develop a professional, consistent approach to navigating the markets, and most importantly, those mental mind games that must be mastered to make it as a profitable market operator. Okay, so that gives you a uh, sense of where it is I'm coming from. Let's jump into the charts. And as always, if you have any questions, just drop them into the chat box and I'll come back at the end of my presentation and answer any questions that are there. Equally, if there's an instrument you would like me to take a look at that I don't cover in my uh, deck here, then um, you can also drop that into the chat box and I will uh, I'll give you a view on that at, uh, at the end of the presentation. So we're starting with the S&P 500. As we talked about last week, we were looking for this test of the weekly trend line resistance which we traded into or just shy of. And we have seen quite a uh, pronounced reversal at this stage. So I'm viewing this move currently on the four hour time frame as, uh, as impulsive. And I'm tracking now any pullback equal in scope and scale to that initial pullback that we saw here uh, from the swing low into the 4009 into the 4086. Um, if we hold the current lows, that would take us back up into the 3990s. From there, I'll be watching for bearish reversal patterns. We've also got this trend channel resistance in play now, and I'll be looking for another leg to the downside. So into that 48, uh, sorry, 38, 3980s, 3990s, watch for bearish reversal patterns. I'll be engaging on the short side, targeting move down into the 3880s as the next downside objective. At this stage, we'd really need to see a close back through this trend channel resistance to suggest. This correction is potentially complete, and then we're targeting a move back up into the 4050s as the next upside objective. Moving to the NASDAQ. <clears throat> Similar scenario here, we are looking for any pullback into this trend channel resistance, 11,690s, watch for bearish reversal patterns, and we're looking for another leg to the downside. I'm looking for a five equals one setup. So depending upon where we bottom here, if we hold these current lows, any move up into that 11,700 zone, we watch for bearish reversal patterns to engage on the short side. That would give us a move down to test daily and weekly projected range support into the 11,300 area. Similarly with the, uh, the S&P, we'd really need to see a close back through this channel to suggest this correction is potentially complete. Moving to the Dow Jones, similar setup here. So I'm looking for uh, any pullback now into the trend channel resistance, 34,000 as uh, bearish reversal patterns in this area to engage on the short side and using that five equals one measurement. It's a little bit shorter than that. There we go. So any pullback into that trend channel resistance at 34,000, we watch for bearish reversal patterns to engage on the short side. Our target to the downside becomes 33,200. Moving to the DAX, tracking a corrective move here in the DAX. We were looking, I was looking last week for, uh, for another leg higher, looking for us ultimately to hold this trend channel resistance. We didn't get any reaction there, stole down. So now what I'm looking for is a three wave correction to develop. And ultimately, any move back in to test the 14,460s, we want to see bearish reversal patterns there to engage on the short side. Just moving to the daily chart here, and I'm going to blow this up so you can, uh, it's a little bit clearer with respect to what I'm talking about. So on the daily time frame here, we can see that we have a, a pretty clear um, wave cycle developing here. And I'm going to suggest that we currently have a wave three, an interim wave three high in place. And what we're looking for now is a wave four pullback. Now, what I use as a, an initial uh, target for the wave four low is uh, an equality objective or a symmetry swing versus our wave two uh, corrective legs. So that would actually give us a target here, 13,900, which coincides with these prior highs. So I'm looking for any pullback now in the DAX into 13,900, especially if we get that pullback occurring post uh, the FOMC meeting next week. I watch for bullish reversal patterns here to engage on the long side, looking for that move up into 14,700. The Nikkei, let's move back to the multi-chart view. So the Nikkei also in a corrective phase now. So I'm looking for a, a quality objective versus the swing structure here. When I talk about equality, 
what I mean is equal legs in terms of market at market <coughs> price movements. So that gives us 26,975. That also coincides here with the trend channel support and the high volume node on the daily chart. So I've been watching for bullish reversal patterns in that area to engage once again on the long side, looking for a move at least back up into retest price cycle highs, 28,519. And then on to trend channel resistance just below 29,000. At this stage, we'll take a loss on a closing basis of that trend channel support. Yes, we have a more meaningful high in place. And then we can think about uh, moving lower once again. But for now, the setup and structure looks uh, constructive to me. And so I'm looking for further upside. Nifty has tested into our support zone. And so what I'm looking for now is any flows back through 18,790. I want to engage on the long side. Minimum upside objective is five equals one, which gives us 19,200. At this stage, again, to suggest a more meaningful high is in place, we need to see a close through the 18,600 area, and that would have us back down testing support to 18,120. Moving to the bond market, TLT on a tear. Last week, we were looking for a 108 test. We gapped through there. And what I'm now looking for with TLT is a wave three high to develop just below 111. I'm using the measurement of wave one, a 3.618 extension, which you will often find uh, caps that those wave three highs. So I'm looking for that uh, level that just below the uh, 111. Want to obviously see uh, momentum divergence maintained. So price making new high, but our momentum study failing to confirm that. And then that should set up a three wave corrective move, something similar in scope and scale to our wave two low for our wave four would have us back into 105.60s. From there, I want to watch for bullish reversal patterns to re-engage on the long side. Minimum five equals one objective takes us up to 112. And then that should I complete the first leg of a bigger corrective phase developing in the bond markets. Moving to the Forex space, and we have the dollar index. It's a nice, uh, nice channel trading opportunity here. So I'm looking now for the dollar to uh, any move into this high volume node and trend channel resistance, 106.20s. I'm watching for bearish reversal patterns there to engage on the short side. As we talked about last week, I'm ultimately looking for a test of this 102.70s, which is weekly trend line support and the midpoint of the broader channel that we've been trading in for the dollar index. So any move into here, then I'm looking for a more pronounced corrective move to develop. So we look for 106.20s, 106.30s, bearish reversal patterns there to take us down into our target zone, 102.80s, 10260 there is the weekly projected range support. And the euro obviously trading pretty much inverse to the dollar index. So looking for one more push higher here in terms of the euro up into the resistance zone here, 106.30s. Forget that move. I've been watching for the momentum divergence to be maintained. You see, we'd have pretty much have triple divergence there onto that next high. I watch for bearish reversal patterns there to engage on the short side, targeting a move down to test support at 103.60s. And then from there, we'll see if buyers are going to step back in once again. So we're looking for that test of 106.30 to give us a setup, bearish reversal patterns, momentum divergence maintained. So ideally, what I'd be looking for is momentum to do something like this hold this area and roll over. And then we get a bearish rejection at that 106.30s and our initial target to the downside, 103.60s. Moving to Sterling, <coughs> holding our trend channel support. So close now back through the uh, 122.30s, sets up that move to target 124.80s, 124.90s. And then from there, I'd be looking for uh, a more sustained corrective move to take us back into trend channel support at the 119 here. You can see it all clearly on the daily time frame. Uh, but initially, we are looking for this push towards 125. And then similar to the euro and obviously trading the inverse to the dollar index, we're looking for this momentum divergence to be maintained. And as we get into this area, which are bearish reversal patterns to play for another correction to the downside. And like I say, thinking about something back into that daily trend line support, uh, just below 119 will be the target there. Moving to the dollar yen. <clears throat> Looking for this trend channel play here. Uh, move, look for a test of 138.60s. 
bearish reversal patterns from there. And we are looking for another leg to the downside to target uh, just above 132 in terms of uh, in terms of the dollar yen. Now this could form a complex, uh, more slightly more complex pattern. So we could get a ABC here internally and then get the push up into our resistance zone, 138.30s. But setup remains the same, looking for rejection here from this trend channel resistance and giving us that downside objective into the 132s. Similarly, if we take out this trend channel support here, then that would be the first uh, clue as to the fact that we're not going to test the, uh, the primary trend line resistance and we're likely to roll over and head straight to the target zone at 132. Swissy. Similar scenario to the uh, dollar index here. What I'm looking for is a test now into trend channel resistance at the 95 level. From there, I'm, I want to see if a rejection on either the hourly or the four hour time frame to engage on the short side. And I'm looking for a test down there into projected trend channel uh, support down to the 90, just above the 92 level. Euro yen. <coughs> Looking for the euro yen to test up into trend channel resistance here at the uh, one, just below 145. From there, I'm watching for bearish reversal patterns. Now we still do have we still have an open target here on the downside at 140.20. But what I would also be watching is any pullback into the midpoint of this channel that finds support. So we again we're talking about uh, four hour or hourly uh, rejection of this zone. I would actually look to engage on the long side, looking for a retest of our resistance there at 146.04. The Aussie yen, let's see what we've got here. So with the Aussie yen, I'm looking now for a test of the, it was a quality objective versus the swing low here at 9140s. I'm looking for bearish reversal patterns at 9260s. To engage on the short side, looking for a test down into trend channel support and the monthly projected range resistance, weekly projected range resistance, 1930s. And we've also got this weekly trend line support coming in just below the 90 level. That's going to be a key test here for the Aussie yen. And also, if we think about the Aussie yen as a, uh, as a risk proxy, if we hold this level and we can bounce, then that uh, could set up the, uh, the much, much hoped for Santa Claus rally in terms of risk sentiment in general. Moving to the Antipodeans, commodity currencies, dollar CAD, getting a rejection here. So I'm looking to see if the dollar CAD can hold support into daily projected range support, 135.60. If we can, we have an equality objective just below 138 and those prior cycle highs there. So that's gonna be the test zone um, if we can hold support. At 135.60s, if we don't hold support there, I'm looking for a move down into trend channel support and the high volume node, 134.40s on the downside. The Aussie. Held trend channel support again. So we are looking now for price to extend to the upside. We have the target here at 60, well, just below the 69 handle. If we can extend, we look for trend channel res uh, resistance at 69. 20s also got high volume mode there on the weekly time frame and then once we test into that area i'd be anticipating we get a more sustained uh, corrective pullback in terms of the aussie something similar in scope and scale to the first uh, so if we think about this as the wave two correction let me blow this up and draw it in so you can see exactly what i'm talking about so if we clone that so I'd be looking for this type of corrective move, three wave patterns. So you can see it's trading back down into the 6640s for once again, trying to advance to the upside. Moving to the Kiwi. Kiwi continues to, uh, to track nicely to the top side. We're looking now, the next area of resistance in the Kiwi is gonna be this uh, 6470s. If we hold this trend channel resistance, still scope that we do a three-way corrective move before advancing into that target zone. But if we trade directly to it, I'd be watching for uh, bearish reversal patterns there off this trend channel resistance for this more sustained corrective move to develop before the next leg to the upside. And I think I mentioned last week the potential for uh, the development here of inverse and inverse head and shoulder scenarios. So if we can get up into here, 
then we'd look for this type of price action to play out, testing into just ahead of that uh, 60 level before looking for our next leg to the upside. Gold. <coughs> Looking for a three-wave corrective move to develop here, if we uh, if we can hold the pip, uh, if we can hold the current swing high, uh, which would have us back down into the seventeen forty four area. From there, I'd be looking to engage on the long side again. I'm looking ultimately for us to test into eighteen fifty here, and you can see again. My thinking is that we probably, if we uh, if we retest these highs from current levels. Uh, watch for failure there. And I'm looking for a pullback into the 1680s to develop, uh, to put in a potential inverse head and shoulder scenario, which would then have us targeting a move up into the 1880s. I think that's more than likely going to be a trade for, uh, for the early parts of next year. Silver. Similar to uh, the gold setup, we're looking for a test of 25.19, the trend channel resistance. If we can, let me just move this. If we hold here at the 23.20s, we look for a pullback into the trend channel support and weekly projected range support coming in now at 21.90. From there, watch for bullish reversal patterns to engage on the long side. Looking for that move up into trend channel resistance, 2530s for silver. Crude oil, a bit of, uh, so last week we were looking for a test of 7330s to give us a bounce. We've got a decent bounce. Obviously, then we've had various headlines coming out of OPEC. We've had uh, concerns about the China reopening story and, uh, and saw a pretty steep sell-off. I'm actually looking for crude to test below the $70 level and get a uh, the, week, the yearly pivot to, to test here, just above 69. So if we can get that move down into the 69 handle, we know that the US are, uh, are actively um, considering buying crude oil into that $60, uh, that $60 region uh, to restock the, the reserves in the US. So uh, you've, got, uh, you've got a pretty sizable buyer in the market there. And so any reversal from that yearly pivot, I think could have some real legs. And we could then be thinking about a move back uh, certainly into the 80s as, uh, as potential range resistance uh, currently. So any move into that 69 level, certainly you want to keep an eye, watch for either that four hour or the daily uh, bullish reversal patterns to engage on the long side. And I think first stop is a move back up into the uh, the low 80s there as uh, as the range resistance for crude currently. And rounded things out with Bitcoin. I've been watching this uh, most of the week here, looking for this trend channel support to hold at six, just above 16,700. Any close through the trend channel resistance here, 16,900, I want to be involved on the long side, looking for a move up into 17,820 as the next upside objective for Bitcoin. So that concludes this week's whistle stop tour of the markets that I'm, uh, I'm actively tracking. Like I say, it really important week next week uh, for risk appetite and risk sentiment. We've got uh, the CPI data and the final Fed meeting of the year. And uh, once we get those risk events out of the way, maybe we get a shakeout in terms of positioning. Then we'll see if we are going to get a setup for the uh, for a rally into year end or something else to be cognizant of. Remember, price action we saw in 2018 that vicious sell-off on Christmas Eve before recovering, uh, something to be cognizant of because of the rate environment and those rate dynamics that we're currently experiencing, um, which are greater, are potentially, you know, are, have a greater impact than, uh, than that uh, which we saw in 2018. So really what happened at the back of, in, in that, uh, that sell-off was a, a clamor for dollar liquidity. We could get a similar setup this year, but if we uh, if we can get through the FOMC and CPI without any major shocks to the market, then uh, we could glide gently higher into year end. Okay, are there any questions? Uh, gold, I've just uh, just done gold, so hopefully uh, you 
you know what I'm looking at for gold now. Uh, we're looking for any pullback into the 1740s is an opportunity to buy. The, any retest of this 1820 area, as long as we don't make a new high in momentum here, I think we uh, we could start to see a bit of a pullback in gold uh, before advancing into next year. Okay, if there are any other questions coming through, I'm going to wrap this session up here. Actually, what I'll do just quickly for those that are here for the first time, I will share with you the uh, link for the Facebook group where you can get my daily trade plan. And uh, I'll also share the tick, uh, the tick mill trading view account where I share uh, trade ideas on a daily basis. Uh, let me just get that for you. This could be a good place to start for you following these uh, these trade ideas I explained in video format, uh, the, the opportunities that I'm looking at, how I'm shaping the market, the levels of uh, the levels that I'm looking to to engage in. So that could be a good first port of call for you in terms of getting a, a sense of how to, to framework uh, market price action and how to uh, develop trade ideas. Okay, guys, if there aren't any other questions, I'm going to wrap this session up here. As always, traders, plan the trade, trade the plan, and most importantly, manage your risk. Until next week, thanks very much.